Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec. Uh, this is just the quick follow-up video that I wanted to do for the SQL injection to shell tutorial that we uh, just posted. Um, in this video we're going to be showing how to use SQL map for the SQL injection piece of it. Uh, I'm not going to be going over the entire challenge again. I just want to focus on the uh, actual SQL injection and show you how much faster the attack can be using a tool like SQL map. So let's go ahead and get started here. So hopefully you've already watched the other SQL injection to shell video I did uh, where we went through the machine we found the SQL injection vulnerability and we were able to gain shell access to the box that way. In that video we did the SQL injection manually uh, which can be a slow process but I just wanted to give hands-on with the commands that you use to perform the attack. But now we're going to perform that same attack uh, using SQL map to do the, I guess, heavy lifting for us. And you'll be able to see how much faster the process is using this tool. Um, if you don't have it running already, go ahead and fire up your SQL uh, to shell machine and make sure you have Kali running. And then just go browse back to that same website, the photo blog website that we were looking at. And as you can see, I've already got it pulled up here. And we know that our vulner vulnerable uh, URL contained this cat.php and then this ID parameter. And this is where we did our injections. So the first thing we need to do is... Um, go ahead and open up a terminal window and let me just pull this over here so with SQL map the the commands are actually pretty straightforward the syntax is just going to be we're going to do SQL map tack u to specify the URL that we're going against and then we're just going to put in that URL for the target machine so 192, 168, 1.187 slash cat.php question mark id equals one after this we're going to put a tac tac dbms equals mysql so we're telling sql map that the backend database is going to be mysql if you don't specify this it's going to try to enumerate and fingerprint the type of database that's used so this just kind of speeds up the process a little bit so the information that we're going to get first is going to be the current database user and the current database name. So we need to specify the tac tac current user and then tac tac current db. And once you get that typed in, just hit enter. And you can see it's already come back. And here we have the database user and the database name. So the next thing that we will look at is getting the actual table names for the database. So let's just clear the screen and pull that command back up. So we're going to change it this time. Uh, now to get the table names you just need to use the tac tac tables option. We'll hit enter again here. And you can see it's pulled up all of the tables. We have the photo blog database and then we also have information schema which we're, we're not going to be using this one. But this is the one we're going to focus on. You can see here we have three tables. We've got categories, pictures, and users. So we're going to focus on that users column, or a users table, sorry. And now we need to find out which columns are contained within that table. So let me clear the screen again. I don't want to keep jumbling it up. Clear. To get the column names, we need to change this option to a TAC capital P. And we're specifying the table name that we want. So that was going to be uh, users. And then we need to specify tac tac columns. 
so we can get the actual column names. So we'll hit enter here. And now you can see we have these three columns in that table. ID, login, and password. And the ones that we wanted to focus on were the, uh, the login and the password columns. So now we can take that information and actually extract the data. So let me clear this again. And to do that, we'll go back up to our command. We're going to change uh, the columns option this time and put a tag capital C. And then we're going to specify the columns that we wanted. So it was login and password. And then we're going to add another option, tag tag dump. And this should extract the data that's in, um, in that particular table. So we'll hit enter here. And let's see, do you want to store hashes? Uh, I'm just going to click no for this option. SQL Map will also give you the option to try to crack any MD5 password hashes that it finds. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it yes here. And it looks like it's already found it. So it found the username the MD5 hash and it cracked the password for us. So just see how that how much faster that process was uh, as opposed to doing it manually. And then we can now take this information and go back and log into our admin page on the website. So in addition to this um, I know I wanted to focus on SQL map for this video but I was kind of messing around in Cali looking at some of the other tools that there were and I found another tool that um, actually worked quite well too as far as SQL, SQL injection goes and I wanted to just quickly show you that I guess that's kind of bonus material for this video if you go up to applications go to your web app analysis and then go to web vulnerability scanners uh, that's not well I clicked on the wrong thing Oh, yeah, that's the one we want. The J SQL injection. And I just wanted to show you quick how this one works. And I'll probably do another video, uh, a tutorial just on this tool, but I wanted to show you quick how it worked. If we take our vulnerable URL, copy it, and use that as our target in here, we don't have to specify anything else at this point just click on connect and it's going to automatically start performing uh, tests for SQL injection and you can see it's already come back with um, we have both of the databases if we click on this photo blog one here you can see it already has the table names and if we go to the users it has the columns showing for us if we want to get that data you just select the columns that you want and then right click on the, uh, the table name and click on load and stop and then you can see over here on the right it pulls the data out for you so this was just another cool tool that I found uh, and I wanted to show you guys quickly what it can do. And it's actually pretty quick about its process. And in addition to uh, doing the SQL injection attacks with it, it also gives you these other options here. Uh, you can do brute forcing with it, which to be honest, I, I tried a couple of hashes here and it can actually be a very slow process doing it this way. Uh, depending on uh, the characters that you select and the length of the password that you're trying to go against. Um, but it lets you do other things. You can specify, you can do web shells and SQL shells. It has a file list here where you can let it test uh, against these specific file names to see if they exist on the server. And you can do the same thing and have it look for admin pages. So it, like for this one, for example, we know that there is a an admin directory. So we can have it um, 
If you select that uh, specific option for admin and click on test admin pages, and it comes back and tells us, yes, there is an admin page, and it shows you what it looks like, basically. Um, but that's all I wanted to show you here. So that's two tools. You've got SQL Map and this JSQL Injection. So those are two tools that you can play around with, and I will be doing tutorial videos on both of these tools in the future. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what they look like and how they can be used for SQL injection attacks. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Um, I hope you get a, a better understanding of how SQL injection works, uh, especially doing it the manual way. But now you've got a couple more tools to use to play around with. Um, again, if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching. Talk to you later, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.